Hello and welcome to my shop. My name is Tracy Maxfield and this is Hammer Down Woodworking. Today's build, we're going to be making a barn door. The customer that ordered this ordered a fairly large door. This one is going to be seven feet tall and 36 inches wide to cover an opening, 32 inch opening with two inches of overhang on each side. But this is going to be a, a build video. Uh, I've got a previous barn door build video out, but this one right here is going to go more in depth on how to lay it out. Uh, I've built several of these, and if you watch the video by the end, hopefully you'll be able to build you one too. Okay, the first thing I want to do is, is I'm going to joint one edge on this 2 by 6 well, on all the 2 by 6s get one edge straight. That way it'll register off the fence on the table saw and cut it down to my final width, and then we will dress the faces on, on this board. So we're going to cut this down to about 5 and a quarter. Our final depth or width that we're going to shoot for is going to be uh, five inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut these two long ones into seven feet. That's the height of the door. Now that we've jointed one face and one edge, we'll cut these two to their final width on the table saw, which will be five inches. All right, before I go to the, the planer to start that process with those two styles that we just made on for each side of the door, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rails and mill those down, get them, get them like I want them, and then plane them all at the same time, then that way they all come out the same thickness. But I've got uh, two five inch wide styles, which is gonna come up to 10 inches, of course. The, whole, the overall width of this door is gonna be 36, so that leaves me 26 inches to fill for, and with my rails. I've gotta add three quarters of an inch back to that to put a 3 8 inch tongue on the, the end of each one of those uh, rails. This door is going to be assembled by a tongue and groove joint. Now we use the thickness planer to bring all the rails and the styles down to the same thickness. All right, now we've got the frame cut out. These are all milled to one and a quarter inches thick. And there's gonna be, on the inside of both of these styles, there'll be a three eighths inch by 38 inch deep slot. It'll be the same slot on both sides of the center rail. It'll be one deep. And there'll be one here. And then there'll be a 38 by 38 tongue on each end of all three of these that will go into that slot. And that slot will also serve as uh, a place for the inside panel to go. Looking pretty good. That's a big door. All right, I'm going to cut these slots on and the, the groove for the tongue and groove. I'm going to cut them on the router table. I have a 3 8 inch slot bit in the router. Let me show you how I marked this to line this up. First thing I did after putting the bit in the router is I lined that bearing up with the edges of the, of the fence. This board, I, I milled this scrap the same thickness as the uh, rails and styles for the door just for this purpose as a, a setup. And I marked center, of course was 5 8 with it being an inch and quarter thick. And then I had to come 3 16 I don't know if you can see that or not, 3 16 from that notch out, which is 3 8 
and then just lining that up with the cutter of the bit. And that gives me exactly 7 sixteenths on each outside of the each side of the slot. I've got 7 sixteenths. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. I have a 7 sixteenths there. Of course, 3 8 inch slot bit. I know it's centered. All right, now that all the slots are cut, I've taken the 3 8 inch slot bit out and I put a half inch slot bit in it and dropped it down to where I could raise it 17, 7 16 above the top of the, the tabletop and we'll pass it along the end, end for end, on both sides. And that should leave us a 3 8 inch slot on her tongue on the end of each one of her rails. But now I've, let, I've set this purposely low, just a little bit under 7 sixteenths, and I'm going to take a shoulder plane and creep up on that perfect fit in the slots on all the, the uh, styles. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on camera, but that is just a little small amount thick and I'd rather have it thick than have it too thin and it don't take much on the shoulder plane just to go in and get that perfect fit time to start making our filler our slats for the inside of the door. Alright this is going to be the same process before joint one edge, saw it down to width at the table saw, bring it back joint and plane. That has the, the panels, the material for the panels cut down to the width. Now the width of these boards will determine upon, be determined by the width of your, your door, of course. If you follow the same uh, pattern that I have, don't forget to add, you've got 3 eighths of an inch on each side for that tongue and groove that you'll have to add 3 eighths of an inch to your outside board. And I'm also adding, adding a tongue and groove to these inside boards, which is a quarter inch, and I've added that width to each one of these also. So you'll have to sit down and do some math. There's not any real formula to it other than allowing and then taking away. Uh, but these are going to be tongue and groove quarter inch on the inside, and I have also allowed one sixteenth of an inch per board for movement. So. The only thing left to do now before we cut the, the tongue and groove to these boards is to cut them off at the right length, square up one end, one end and cut them down to the, to the right length. And I've got, also got to add a full three quarter of an inch to my inside length to allow for a three eighths inch slot up into the door at the top and bottom of each one of these panels. All right, now it's time to make that slot. And all 
the boards will get the slot across the end, but only these outside boards in the panel will have a slot on this side. And I'm using the same half inch uh, slot bit that I used before. I did have to readjust the height because I went from working with an inch and a quarter thick material to working with three quarter inch material. So I did have to adjust that a little bit. But right here's what this slot's going to look like. And that's just going to sit down in there. And that'll let your door on the back have just a, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's got just a small shadow line. And then you've got this inset on the inside, which is at your show side of your door. And that will give you a place to put your cross braces in it. Now I have my tongue cutter bit in the router. This will cut a quarter inch tongue. And after I cut all the tongues, I'll go back and cut the quarter inch slot in the other side. Then the panels will be ready to go in the door. It won't be long until we'll be able to do a glue up. Still got dowels in place, but it won't take long. Got this one side on everything lined up good got it clamped up let me show you these joints and, and why I've got clamps on it like I have that looks like a mess but there's 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 a method to the madness I didn't have a clamp that was long enough to go the full stretch of this door so I took two parallel clamps and just hooked them in the middle and I let the base of it lay across these edges of the rail in the style and pull that up flat. And of course this one is pulling this thing together. And same thing here. And the same thing here. As you can see, this thing on top of this door is, is flat by that parallel clamp pulling, pulling those together. All right, it's the next morning. This door has stayed under clamps overnight and it's time. The only thing left to do is to add the cross brace at the bottom of the door and to sand all my marks off of it. And I haven't decided yet, but I will probably add some round over to the edges on it too, to kind of soften them up a little bit. But we're gonna add this brace now. Let me show you how, how I've done that. Pull a measurement from the tip of this corner to the tip of that corner. And I cut this off to length just a little bit longer than my measurement. And this piece is also, it's not structural, it's just decorative. So uh, we're going to spot glue and pin nail this down. Uh, the thickness of this will be the same thickness as your ledge here, which on this door is 7 16 And to mark this, I'm actually gonna mark it a little larger than what it is and cut it off the bandsaw. And then I will creep up on the fit with the sander.
Now that everything is sanded, I'm gonna take a 3 16 inch round over bit and just soften the outside edges all the way around on both sides of the door. The inside is gonna stay squared up, but just the outside edges. Well, that'll do it for this build. I hope you found that beneficial. This this one is a large door. Uh, the customer that ordered this is going to finish it, finish it themselves. They're going to either paint it or stain it, whatever they decide to do. They wanted it left unfinished so they could put the finishing touches on it. But this one is a large door. It's 36 inches wide and seven feet tall as to cover an opening into a hallway. And I think it's going to look real good in their home once they get it finished and get it home. But you can, too, build uh, a door just like this. I hope you found this video helpful. And you can do it with hand tools. You can do it like I did on the router and the table saw. Or you can even cut the joinery for this right on your table saw if that's what you've got. It doesn't take very many tools to do this. It's just the layout and the measurements of it. Uh, whatever you make these and your total width, you'll have to kind of divide your boards up in here if you do the tongue and groove to be able to get enough material to cover without having any caps. But that's not that hard to do. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up. And until next time, thanks for watching.